I have a friend in Australia, and he was bringing me over to uh, teach acting and do some healing workshops. And he got a hold of you and said, oh, I, Dee Wallace is coming over. He put us together and we Skyped together. And I really did truthfully fall in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> I did, Craig. You were just so genuine and I felt like I could work with you. You know, you were so open and, and you, you sent me the script and, and I was fascinated with the script and all the social commentary things that were in there. Um, as you know, I, I disagreed about um, uh, killing the little child. In the original script, I had written in that there's an eight-year-old girl who gets killed. Yes. Can you tell me? And so you read that version of the and script. And I read that and I went, whoa, you're going to lose the, at least the American audience. You're going to lose them up front. There's two cardinal rules. You don't kill kids, you don't kill animals, right? Uh, unless it's inescapable uh, part of the story, which this really wasn't. No. And um, I said, look, for what it's worth, that's what I think. And you decided that that had some merit. Yeah. And uh, But that was really the only... Um, thing that I felt cautionary about. Uh, I thought all the characters were so interesting and so well developed and, and their backstories and all the things that I look for in a good film, whether it's a horror film or a comedy, you have to have relationships. You have to have relationships that people understand and care about, right? And this had all of that. And I was fascinated with that part of the script. And I was also went, holy hell, this is like another tour de force mom Cujo role. I don't know if I can still do that. The energy, the physical, the physicality, because there's a lot of physicality yeah. in Red Christmas. And, and the emotional life and all that. I mean, I did Cujo. 35 years ago, mm. you know, but I, as soon as I had that thought, I went, well, screw that. I'm going to try, you know, I'm in, I'm in. If you want me, I'm in. So that's how it all um, came about to be. And then, you know, we got on the set and I go, oh, Craig, this would be really cool if I could burst through the door and fall on the floor <laughs> and do a roll. And <laughs> well, you sometimes were your own worst enemy there. Well, I yeah, but exciting. it made it. It made it. Of course, it, it made it yeah. exciting to see someone run around and but jump on the floor. This is what you did. I don't know if you remember. I, <laughs> and, and and then I'll come up and I'll shoot him, and you went, "Can you do that? <laughs> do you? Are you willing to do? I don't have a stunt woman for you, D. I, I went, no, no, no. I can do this. I can do it. So, so good. you know, we ended up with a few, bru few bruises, but nothing major. No, I, I, remember, I felt bad. And I was too. going, yes, I can still do it. <laughs> Have you ever hurt yourself? I oh think? my God! Yes, what? Oh yeah. Well, in Cujo, you know, yeah. when I when I have to break the back of the pinto, for example, yeah. and they said, "Okay, D, it's all treated. You can't break the glass, but we need you to hit it really hard because we're doing it in slow motion, right? Two hits, broke the glass. Hand went through the glass." Right, I didn't hear cut, so I just kept on going. And this is the interesting thing about an actor, because half of you, at, when something like that happens, half of you is the character and half of you is D. So what what's going on inside me is, oh my God, get the kid, get the kid, the dog's coming, get the kid. You can't get the kid, the glass is broken, you can't drag him out <laughs> like you rehearse it. Get the kid, get the kid, the dog's coming. Yeah, but wait, you have to walk, wait, how are we going to, get the kid, get, right? Mm -hmm. And and I never heard cut, so I just kept going until I got all the way up to the house. I heard cut and our producer ran in and said, oh my God, are you okay, are you okay? And I said, yeah, why? And I looked down to my arm and it was all, you know, bleeding and mm -hmm. scratched and everything. So, yeah, I got, I mean, I did all my own flying in the 
the Frighteners. Oh. When we're going through the belly yeah. of the worm. Yeah, that was all on, on wires. Yeah. In a green screen? We, was that in a real location? In, a, in the studio. Yeah, right. In New Zealand, yeah. Wow. We shot it all in Peter's studio in New Zealand. I Blake adored Blake Edwards. Talk about old Hollywood. Yeah. And he knew exactly what he wanted and yet gave you all of this freedom. I mean, I just kept trying to keep up with Dudley Moore, you know. I mean, we had a script and we knew what we were doing, but Dudley would just go off. And, and one time I remember um, Blake would watch it on way across the sound stage, right? And nobody was supposed to talk after cut until they heard Blake, what he wanted to do. And so we cut one of the scenes, first takes in the bedroom, we went, I don't know who the fuck wrote it, but we're gonna print it. <laughs> because we had just, you know, fallen over yeah. the banister backwards. And yeah, yeah. That wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, really? That's fantastic. Yeah. 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 And, but, you know, it was my, it was really my first big feature film. The beauty of filmmaking and theater and music is collaboration. And some of the greatest moments in all of my films came from something that just happened to me and the director went, oh, that's a moment. We're going to expand on that moment. Or an idea that I had. I said, oh, what about this? Or an idea, you know, that the DP had. Go, hey, what about this? Or a co-star had said, what if we do that? You know, if you're not open, if you're so insecure that you're not open to that collaboration, you really demean the whole project, I think. I had written into the script that Jared, you shoot Jerry, he goes mm -hmm. down, then you turn around immediately and confront the bad guy standing at the Christmas tree. Yes. But on the day, you said, no, 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 if I shoot my son and kill him, I'm going to feel bad, which is the whole point. Uh, and well, and you know that was coming from her yeah. more than it was coming from me. I think we're missing a huge moment of completion and it will also give us permission to turn around and kill somebody. Yeah. You know, if somebody kills your child, everybody's going to give you permission, you know. When the dog in Cujo came through the door and he was going to get my kid finally, then I had permission to shoot that dog. Shh, keep watching the house. You have to get Scott because There was a moment in, in Red Christmas where in the shed, you, you're collecting all the weapons, and you said that's because your character needed to do something proactive in the scene, apart from the dialogue. Oh, and yeah. I, and I love it when actors point out it's not just the dialogue that creates the story. We're human beings standing in the frame doing something. So you wanted to grab weapons. Always. I, yeah. I love business. Yeah. Especially... You, just standing there in a scene which is supposed to start, you know, really ramping everything up, it's, it, it changes the dynamic totally. That's what I loved about her because she had so many levels of stuff that was going on with her. She was torn about the abortion. She was torn about the history. She was torn about her husband's death. She was torn about the fact Jerry's character would feel uh, less than if he ever found out that her uh, family would disown her because she'd always been this really strong matriarch, you know, spouting, you should do this and you should do that, and you know, all this moral stuff and what are they going to think of her now. And I mean, there was, there was a lot of conflict within her that she had to rise above in order to
to take care of everybody, which she didn't do a very good job of. <laughs> also, there's a reason for that, and I feel bad telling you now, but I haven't told you. When Uh-oh. I read a book about how to write horror movies, and they said you make characters that you like, making decisions that the audience will hate. And that was really bad because uh, I kind of written it in that everything, once things go bad, Diane, your character, makes kind of bad choices, even though they're completely motivated in protecting everyone. Using, I don't know, survivalist or, you know, if you're a Marine, for instance, you would make different choices to what your character does. And I kind of wrote that Joe, while he was still alive in it, was making all the correct choices that would su- survive. The family would survive with that. And I felt terrible as well because I knew it was dealing with uh, reproductive rights and stuff, knowing that that's a bad thing to have to do to write a female character who's making bad choices. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's such a sad... Well, I never looked at them as bad choices. I, I looked at them as drastic choices. Yeah. And, uh, oh my God, it's, it's like... What else do you do? What else can we do? What else can we do? This makes sense. Try to get to the car. It makes sense. We can't stay here any longer. If we stay here, everybody's going to die. Oh, shit. Well, we went to the car and a lot of people died. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I, I never looked at it that way. I just looked at a mother who was never, ever, ever going to give up trying to save everybody. It's It kind of becomes a pro-life story, I found out, using academics talking to them and because when you personalize or make into a human form the fetus you know mm-hmm. it's meant it then becomes pro-life and that's a tactic used by protesters outside of clinics to say this is a human being blah 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 yeah but i think i think you covered both sides well that that's what i attempted to do absolutely that, yeah. because hopefully i played it that part truthfully so you could see why she made the decision not to go forward yeah. with it. I mean, is it really in the interest, best interest of a child to go, I don't want it, I can't do this again, I'm going to resent it, I can't handle it, it's more than I can do, and still bring them into the world? Mm. No, I don't I mean, it's, yeah. that's a moral question that each person has to answer individually. Yeah. For themselves, I I had also written that men or, or anti anti uh, abortionists coming into the world and and making you have that baby because that's what happens. The thing lives when it wasn't meant to, and what it ends up doing is killing everything and destroying your family. Yeah. Which in my head kind of justifies the other side of the debate, which is you didn't want this to happen. A right wing nut blows up a clinic. And makes this thing live and takes away your choice that you made. And then that thing comes back. It's yeah, almost like, you know... You know, it's it's really that basic core thing. Yeah. Can you just live your fucking life and let me live mine? <laughs> yeah. You know, if we could... All of us just get to... My way's right for me. Yeah. And your way's right for you. Yeah. And I'm not going to judge you for that. Yeah. Please don't judge me for that. But then I, I came up in the 80s, yeah. uh, you know, uh, where there were a plethora of movies of the week, and most of them were female victims. You know, I played rape victims and battered wives, and you name it, I did it. As an actress, couldn't ask for a better time, right? Yeah, because you yeah. get work and you get to go through Well, work. and I yeah. got to do everything. I, Look, I love to do all the big emotional stuff. I love it. I love to play the big arts and scream and cry and all that stuff that I love to do and I'm, I'm good at it, you know? So all those storylines um, gave me much more of what I wanted to do than playing the Queen of England would have, you know? Yeah. You know, I'm doing a project right now which is very close to me. Yeah. I never knew how boring I was. I I mean, it's boring playing yourself. Yeah. You know? I mean, Mary in E.T. was very close to who I am 
but gave me a huge arc of emotional life to to play with you know so uh, but you know, give me Cujo any old day <laughs> red Christmas you know yeah. well, that's why when I read Christmas I went oh I get to do this again oh my god let me do this again so no we don't have the trappings of a proper shoot I was very excited that you took it upon yourself to commit to just go well I'm here now this is what it is I, I will keep believing in it and at no point did you give me the feeling that it was gonna you know that it was bad or look the was... first time I watched any playback I went these guys know what they're doing I couldn't believe you got what you got with the little light setup and everything that we were it was I learned a lot quite frankly, about how really good something can look with hardly anything. Really. Yeah, yeah. I guess we're lucky we've experimented a lot with that no money in the past and have well, found what it, works, you know. And so, you know, E.T. Yeah. was supposed to be Stephen's little film because it was the smallest budget. The small but budget, some, yeah. Sometimes it demands more creativity out of you. I believe that. You know, I remember a, a shot in The Howling. Um, it, of course, it was a night shot. And um, the generators blew. And it was the last night we were on that ranch we had to get the shot. So everybody, actually, I think it was Chris, uh, Christopher Stone, my late husband, who said, well, what if everybody pulls their cars up and we turn the headlights on? Yeah. And that's, and it's the eeriest yeah. look. <laughs> You know, it's it was so that, that lucky accident, right? Yeah. How did you find working with Jerry? I, I felt were, uh, challenged. I felt not uh, with Jerry as an actor, but just with, with, with his farting and, you know. <laughs> we had a lot of fun with Jerry farting on he, the set. Well, he embraces it. He's a, yes. he's a nut. But I loved watching you direct and work with and love Jerry. And he's so full of love and it's, it was, I think I learned more from Jerry about where I needed to be a bigger person. Yeah, right. Where, you understand that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, I, I mean by that. that. Yeah. 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 Jared's excellent. He, his whole, and not just as an actor, but it's what makes him good as an actor, is he responds to the world emotionally. Absolutely. Yeah. But to emotional. watch you with him took patience, <laughs> but it also just always moved me, okay, to watch it. You've done so many films and worked with so many fancy people. Is there fancy any... people. <laughs> well, I've always wanted to play a nun. Don't ask me what? why. I've always wanted to play a nun. Why? Okay, I don't know. I don't if you want. know. Okay, I don't know. I don't know why. I've just always wanted to play a nun. I'm not even clear about what kind of nun. A, a troubled nun, a challenged nun, a, right? And I'm also really, really looking for a great project to do with my daughter. Yeah. Okay. Gabrielle, who's a fabulous young actress. You've, you've done several short films I've seen with her. Well, I a couple, roles. Yeah, a couple, two, yeah. but really not anything meaty between me and her. Well, Dee, thank you so much for talking to me on this DVD. It was a lot of fun. I love you, Craig. <laughs> I would love to work with you again sometime. You call, I'm there, dude. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, thanks, Dee. The writing of the story.